Hi friends, and welcome back to You Can Yoga Too. Today we're gonna be focused on finding more strength for down dog. Now, in most yoga classes, they're like, down dog's a resting pose. But especially when you're new, it really doesn't feel that restful. So we're gonna work on building strength in the legs and the core and the shoulders and getting nice and opened up so we can make our down dog a little bit more comfortable as we move through our practice. So let's get started on our backs in our constructive rest pose. So both feet on the floor. You're gonna scoot your butt down towards your heels and then holding on to the back of the legs, you're gonna roll down and we'll take three breaths here. So bring one hand to the belly and one hand to the heart. Seeing if you can move the hand on the belly. Take a big inhale, fill up. Sinking into our practice. Letting go of our day so far and what's ahead. And being here in the moment. Awesome job. So we'll get started right away. We're gonna plant the feet, bring the hands by the sides, relax the head down. So pressing into the heels, into the hands and into the back of the head. We're gonna tilt the pelvis up toward the ceiling, start to squeeze into the glutes, push into the heels and lift up into our bridge pose. So we're trying to keep the hips, the knees, and the feet all in line. So you don't want your legs to splay out, or your knees to collapse in, and you don't wanna thrust your chest up toward the ceiling. It's a gentle lift and squeeze. And then exhale, gently roll down. Then we'll bring the soles of the feet together and let the knees splay open. Three breaths here. in our butterfly pose. And then bringing the knees back together, you can even use your hands to help your legs. And we're gonna take that block. If you don't have your block, you can use a little rolled up towel. You can use all sorts of stuff. Check out my uh, Props 101 video for homemade prop ideas. You're gonna take that block and squeeze it between your thighs. Squeeze it like you mean it and we're gonna come back up into that bridge pose. So tilting the pelvis up, we press into the hands and feet, reach the chest toward the chin and the chin toward the sky, and then squeeze that block with your legs. So this is one of those little training wheels that I like to use to train our legs and hips for the proper alignment in bridge pose. So when you put the block in there, you know that your knees and your feet and your hips are going in the right direction and working hard. Take one more inhale up to squeeze, and then slow, slow as you can. Roll it back down, and then take the block out, bring it to the side. We're gonna squeeze the knees into the chest here. So you can make little circles or rock side to side, just loosening up the low back a little bit. Give it a nice big squeeze, make yourself into a little tiny ball and then rolling off to the side, we're gonna use our arms to press up to sit. Bring the feet out in front of you. We're gonna hold on to the backs of the thighs coming into uh, Navasana, our little modified boat pose. So we're gonna roll the shoulders back, keeping the feet planted, and then gently lean back until you feel your core light up. So a lot of people lean back and then they start to turtle, the shoulders come up and the spine rounds. This is not where we wanna be. We wanna keep the spine straight, we wanna keep the belly in, and then lean back from there. So only go back as far as you can without turtling. If you turtle, you gotta come up a little bit. Nice puffy chest. If you're feeling real froggy today, you can even let go. Whew. And if you hate it, you can come back. So really warming up that core. One more big breath in, and then exhale, come up. Just fold over the legs for a second, take a breath. And then we'll come to our easy seated pose. 
So of course I'm a yoga teacher, so it's comfortable for me to sit like this. If it's not comfortable for you to sit like this, you sit how you want to sit. We're going to do a few little neck rolls here. Actually, let's do a couple shoulder rolls first. So up and down. <sighs> Keep checking in with your breath. Check in with the body. Check in with the mind. Did the mind wander off to your grocery list or is it still here with you on the mat? And then we'll bring the left ear to the left shoulder. Bring it around to the right shoulder. Just like that. Little half circles. Uh, feels so good. Breathe into it. Breathe into those tense little knot spots. Nice. And bring it around. And back to center. And then we're going to make some goal post arms here as we do a little breathing exercise to help open up the chest. So we're going to inhale, pull those hands back. And then exhale, round. Pull the belly in gently and bring the elbows together. So inhale, open it up, pull those elbows back, squeeze the shoulder blades together, and then exhale, bring it in and round. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. Awesome job. One more time. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. Awesome. And then bring the hands to the thighs and we're going to come up to a kneeling pose. So a little thunderbolt, but modified. So we're going to tuck the toes under to stretch through the feet. So we need nice stretchy feet for our down dog. So we're going to tuck those toes under and sit back on the heels. So this does not feel awesome, but it's a really good stretch for the feet. And if you need breaks at any point, just come up, take a little break and then sit back down. Remember, breaks are encouraged in yoga, so take them when you need them. We're gonna bring the fingertips to the tops of the shoulders, and then we're just gonna make circles. <coughs> we're gonna make little circles, and then the circles are gonna get bigger. So sitting up nice and tall, don't lose that length in the spine. Make the circle a little bigger. So you're gradually making them bigger. Mine sound like an old timey coffee grinder. If yours do too, that's okay. And then we'll do the same thing in the other direction. So little circles, gradually growing into bigger circles. Keep breathing. Keep going. On your next inhale, we're going to reach the hands up tall. And then exhale, bring the hands forward to the mat. And just kick it out. Nice job. And we're going to come into our cat and cow pose. So making sure that the wrists are right underneath the shoulders and the knees are under the hips. We're going to inhale, pull the hands back, pull the belly long, look up. And exhale, press the floor away, round, arching the spine, tuck the chin. Beautiful. Inhale, stretch the belly long, pull back on the hands, energetically tilt the tailbone up. Press the floor away like every angry Halloween kitty cat you've ever seen. Arch the spine. And inhale. Back into your cow pose. And then on your exhale, we'll come back to our neutral tabletop pose. And we're going to take a little thread the needle. So we're going to start on the left side. So we're going to inhale that left arm up. And then on your exhale, just like it sounds, we're going to thread it under that right hand reach forward left shoulder comes down to the mat left ear comes to the mat using that right hand for support I'm trying to shift the weight evenly between both knees and if you're crunched up in the neck here make sure you shift your hips back closer to your bum And then on your next inhale, we'll push through that right hand, come back up to center, plant the hands, and we'll go to the second side. So inhale that right arm up and exhale, scoop, reach and extend, coming down on the right ear and the right shoulder. Big breaths here in our twist. 
It's a little twist here. It's a little shoulder opener. It's a little bit of everything. And then on your next inhale, we'll push through that left hand, coming back up to our tabletop pose. And we're gonna take a little half circle pose. So we're gonna stretch those right toes back. Came off my mat. Press the right toes back. And then we're gonna kick that left foot off the mat, make it into a little kickstand. And then we're gonna plant that right heel on the floor. So we have lined up left hand, left knee, right foot. And then on your inhale, we open up, reach up toward the ceiling, pressing out of that left hand, standing on that right foot. And then that right arm comes up and over. So really kick that left foot out because that's what's gonna support you in this pose. You wanna pull the belly in gently. Keep pressing, don't collapse into that left shoulder and that left wrist, keep pressing out. Big breath into the side body. And exhale, we dismantle. So right hand comes down, right knee comes down, back to center. And then just quickly, we're gonna flip that left wrist over. So the back of the hand is on the mat, the arm is straight. Little wrist stretch here. There's a lot of weight and pressure in our wrists and our downward dog pose. So we wanna make sure that they're warmed up and stretched. And then shake it out. And then we'll go to the other side. So now we'll kick those right toes off the mat, press the left toes out long, pivot so that that left heel is in line with the right knee and the right hand and then open up. Breathing. And then once you feel steady, you can reach those left fingertips forward. And you can always make those little adjustments to make sure that that wrist is under the shoulder still and that knee is under the hip. Remember, you're never stuck in a pose. You're never glued to the mat. One more big breath into lengthen and then exhale, left hand comes down. The feet come in and we're back in our tabletop pose and we're gonna flip that right wrist over. So the palm is facing up and the fingers are pointing toward you. Big breaths here. Giving that wrist a little love, shake it out. And then again, we're just gonna sit back on our heels into our thunderbolt pose. So if this isn't comfortable for you, remember you can always take your block and put it right under your butt and that'll give you a little more lift and a little more room. You can also use a pillow, whatever you need, make it work for you. Or you could be on top of a blanket. That's always nice. So bringing the hands to the thighs, we're gonna roll the shoulders back to make sure we're sitting up nice and tall. And then I'm gonna take my block or whatever I'm using for my block, maybe a big book, some dog hair on mine. <laughs> we're gonna reach it out in front of us. So squeezing the block, keeping your elbows straight, but not locked. We're squeezing the block out in front of us. So what we're gonna do here is keeping the arms straight. We're gonna reach forward, widening the shoulder blades apart from each other. And then we're gonna squeeze back. So as we pull in, we're not gonna pull in with our elbows. We're gonna use the shoulder blades to pull it in. So we squeeze the shoulder blades toward each other. And then exhale, reach. Inhale, squeeze. Exhale, reach it out. Inhale, squeeze. This one takes some practice. You're also squeezing the block as you do this. These are sometimes called scapula push-ups. They're really good for building those muscles in the back for our downward dog. So let's do one more. Awesome. And then we're gonna lift the arms with the block up above. And on your, you're gonna bring your ears between your biceps. And then on the exhale, now we're gonna bend the elbows, squeeze the block, bring it down behind your head. And then inhale, reach it up. Exhale, squeeze. Inhale, reach. Exhale, squeeze. Inhale, reach it up. You got this one more. Exhale, squeeze. And inhale, reach it up. Awesome job. 
And we're gonna release that with a little puppy pose. So puppy pose is different from child's pose in that with child's pose, you reach forward with the hands and then you press the butt back toward the heels. In puppy, we keep the hips over the knees and then walk the hands forward, bringing the face toward the floor. You can always put a block under here, whatever you need to support yourself. But in your puppy, don't completely collapse in your low back. Make sure that you're still pressing out of the fingertips and that you're gently pulling your belly in. See the difference there from when you let your belly go and let the low back cave in and then with a more supportive low back, you're gonna feel a much more intense stretch through the upper body and through the shoulders. And that's what we're looking for. All right. And then from here, we're gonna shift forward onto the belly and we're gonna do some little baby cobras. So we're gonna take the arms out, little goal post arms here, press the toes into the mat, press the pelvis into the mat, and as you lift up, you're gonna lift Ah, again, squeezing those shoulder blades together, pulling hands and elbows off the mat. And then exhale down. Twice more. Inhale, lift. Exhale down. Inhale, lift. And exhale down. Awesome job. And then we're going to do cobras with the hands. So I'm going to invite you as we do it with the hands to try to light up those same muscles that we did without using our hands. So we're not just muscling it through the arms. So rolling the shoulders back, pressing the toes down, press the pelvis into the mat. Inhale, cobra pose, shoulders away from the ears. Exhale down. Inhale, cobra. Exhale down. One more. Inhale, lift. We're gonna hold it just for a breath. So pressing the floor away, engaging those back muscles. And then exhale, Whew. bring it down. Press it up and back into a child's pose. Take a breath. And then shift forward on your inhale, back into your tabletop pose. And we're gonna do a little hovering cat. So we're gonna press the tops of the feet into the mat. Remember, pat it up if you need to. And then on your exhale, you're gonna press through the hands and lift the knees off the floor about an inch. So big breath in, and then exhale. Press into the tops of the feet, engage the core. Keep breathing. As soon as we use the core, everyone stops breathing and they do this. You don't wanna do that. You gotta keep breathing. One more big inhale, and then exhale down. Whew, take a little breath. You might want to flip the wrists here. Because we're going to do one more of those, but this time we're going to tuck the toes under. So tucking the toes, we're going to exhale, lift the knees about an inch off the floor. So lift, lift, lift. Strongly pushing through every fingertip. Don't tense up through the neck. Pull in through the belly. Keep breathing. Always keep breathing. One more inhale here, and then exhale. Whew. Bring it down. And then we're just gonna walk the hands back toward you and come up to a fold. So now we're on our feet, feet about hip width apart. If you don't know where your hip bones are, since you're folded here, you can check, you can do about two fists in between the feet. While we're here, take a look down at your feet. Make sure you're standing on your whole foot. I naturally over pronate so my feet turn in. So I always have to keep checking in with my feet. Keeping the knees as soft as you need to. And then slowly, 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 slowly rolling up to stand as slow as you can. Vertebrae by vertebrae. Coming back up into our strong mountain pose. Let's do a couple half sun salutations. So we'll inhale up and exhale fold. Hinging from the hips. <sighs> inhale, halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, fold. 
press through the feet, come all the way up to stand, reach up, and hands to heart center. And again, inhale, reach. Exhale, fold, moving with your breath. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, fold. Press through the feet, come all the way up to stand, reach up, and hands to heart center. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Look up, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Press through the feet. Come all the way up to stand. Reach up. And hands to heart center. And now we're going to take our block. You're going to stay standing. I just want you to be able to see this, okay? So you're going to take your block. And you're going to reach up, reach, 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 squeezing the block. You're going to exhale over to the right. So still pressing into the block, engaging the muscles in your arms, in your pectorals. And then inhale, center. Exhale, go over to the left. Big side body stretch here. Bump that right hip out, reaching. Inhale. Come up to center one more time each side. So exhale, squeezing, stretching and strengthening, pressing into the block. Inhale back to center. Second side over to the left, building that strength. And inhale center. And then exhale, fold down, forward fold, press the block back down. And then we're going to bend into the knees. So we're going to bend the knees until your belly is resting on your thighs. From there, we're going to shift the weight back into the hips. Keeping the knees bent, we're going to come up into our chair pose. So inhale, keeping the hips super low. We're going to reach the hands forward. So you can take a more traditional chair pose with the arms up by the shoulders. Or you could take it like I do with the arms reaching forward. We just want to make sure the belly is in, the spine is nice and long, and that that weight is in the heels. Inhale, reach forward. Exhale, airplane the arms. Inhale, forward. Exhale, airplane. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Reach the backs of the hands up toward the ceiling. And one more. Inhale, reach forward. Exhale, back. And then big hallelujah breath, straighten the legs, reach the arms up, and hands to heart center. Awesome job. And then from here, we're going to come into our cow face pose arms. So you're going to open your arms nice and wide. I'm going to come down here again so you can see my arms. So keeping the arms nice and wide, we're going to bring that left hand up, bend the left elbow, bringing it to the middle of the back. Right thumb turns down toward the floor. We reach the right fingertips back and wiggle them toward the left fingertips. So you can grab a strap here if your fingertips don't touch, or you can just hold on to the back of your shirt. This is how I like to do it. So the important thing here too is that you're not, say you wiggle and you hook your fingers, right? And then your neck is all bunched up like this. Your chest is all puffed out like this. And this is not what we want. You want to let go of the hands so that this left elbow can come back and you still have room in your neck. So don't force it by hooking those fingers if you're going to get all jumbly up like this. Because then you're not going to get all the good benefits of the pose. So keeping the neck open, keeping the chest open. One more big breath. And then let it go. Shake it out. And then we'll go to the other side. So reach the right hand up. Bring the right hand to the middle of the back. Reach the left arm out. Turn that left thumb down. And then sweep it to the middle of the back. Wiggling toward the fingertips. Oh, I reached them on this one. Sometimes we always have a tight side. Call it a bad side. It's not bad. It's just probably a little tighter than the other side. 
big breaths in here opening up the shoulders awesome job and then let that go shake it out and then we're going to do a little back bend bringing the hands to the low back you can also use little fists here if you have sore wrists or you can turn the fingertips out so as we do this we want to press down on our sacrum so pressing down we want to squeeze into the glutes and we're going to squeeze the shoulder blades toward each other like they love each other like they're trying to kiss those elbows they just love each other and then gently we're going to start to press in and down as we lean back and look up so breathe here keep squeezing those elbows toward each other keep the glutes strong to protect the low back you want to play with your edge here but don't go past it if you feel any actual pain come out of it and now we're all going to come out of it back to center and then <sighs> just exhale forward over the legs and one more little shoulder opener here we're going to reach the arms back and take a bind so we're going to interlace the fingers or hook thumbs and then extend the fists away from the tailbone making sure not to lock the joints out so keeping the elbows soft keeping the knees soft reaching those hands up and over amazing job and then we'll bring the hands down to the mat walk the feet out and we're going to come into a dolphin plank so that's a plank on our forearms so i have really tight shoulders so i need to interlace my fingers to keep my shoulders from going too wide so i make a little triangle here bringing your elbows underneath your shoulders you can come up like a traditional plank on the toes this is perfect this is also perfect with the knees down i'm really engaging my core here this is still challenging even with the knees down so i'd much rather have you have the knees down than to have the knees up and be out of alignment most of the time beginners they want to show off they want to get up on those toes but they're either drooping too low or they're sticking their butt up too high so remember it's just like it sounds you want to be a plank not a banana breathing here pressing into the forearms squeezing the legs together pressing through the heels and the top of the head and then when you're ready we're going to press through the forearms bringing the elbows in between the or excuse me the ears in between the elbows and then walking the feet in so this is our dolphin pose it's just like downward dog except for we have our forearms down so your head isn't touching the floor here it's hovering above the floor and you're pressing through the forearms and the shoulders to press the belly back toward the thighs notice there's still a gentle bend in my knee and my belly is pulled in not so much that i can't breathe though this is a really strong pose you're almost done you're doing so awesome and then exhale bring the knees down press the hips back toward the heels child's pose take a little break you got it and then we'll come up to our downward facing dog so pulling up into your tabletop pose you're going to walk the hands about a handprint forward grip into the mat with all 10 fingertips externally rotate so i can see those little elbow pits are shining toward the front of the mat and then we tuck the toes and just like we did with our warm-up we lift the knees up and then we press the hips up and back into our downward dog if you need help with your downward dog and your alignment please check out my yoga fundamentals think number two is downward dog and then when you get into your down dog feel into it we're going to breathe here so stretching along through the spine and just notice notice maybe what's different do you feel a little more opened up do you feel a little stronger in those places that you need strength 
for this pose. Letting the energy come up through the hands to the tailbone and back down through the feet. One more big breath in. And then exhale, we'll bring the knees down. Amazing job. And then we're just gonna come onto our backs. So flipping it over. Rolling it down. And then before we close today, we're just gonna do a few yogi bicycles. I know I hate working my core too, it's hard. But it's really necessary to give us those nice, strong asana yoga poses. So we'll bring the knees in. We'll bring the hands back behind the head. On the inhale, you're gonna lift up through the shoulders. And then on the exhale, you're gonna twist. That right knee is gonna go toward the left knee. The right leg is gonna come out. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, left elbow to right knee. And as you can hear, my voice is shaking. It's really hard to talk. And sometimes it's difficult to breathe when we're working our core. But please promise me that you'll keep breathing. Remember in yoga, that's always the most important thing. So keep going, activating that core. <sighs> Moving with the breath. One more each side. You got this. Ah, and bring the knees into the chest. One more big squeeze. And then bring the feet down to the mat. And then we'll take the feet as wide as the mat. Let your hands flop open. We'll just do a few windshield wipers here. So exhaling, let the knees flop to the right. Inhale to center, let them flop to the left. Inhale to center, flop to the right. Inhale to center, flop to the left. And as they flop from side to side, your legs are gonna get a little straighter and a little straighter and a little straighter until you come into your Shavasana pose. So please don't skip Savasana. I know I say it, every one of these videos but it's really important i was always one of those people who jumped up and ran away before shavasana but you're not getting the full benefits of your practice unless you stay and sit with it and i know that people are busy and we have things to do but you have two minutes for yourself so extend the legs long you can stay here as long as you like, closing the eyes, melting into the mat, relaxing everything. Keep practicing this video. And in no time, you will have a stronger, more balanced, deeper downward dog pose. Hopefully make your life a little easier. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to leave you here and I encourage you to stay as long as you like. Go with gratitude and lead with love and have a beautiful day.